Good morning, everyone. So that was quite nice. <laughs> I also like this music <laughs> and uh, and uh, everything else. Thank you for inviting me here. And um, yeah, I, I think that I have uh, something to tell you also. So my uh, uh, I am telling about the innovation and science behind sizing market opportunities in the field of bioenergy and waste management. I'm mainly focusing on the waste management, but, uh, but I can give you some ideas or, or innovations behind that. So, um, <clears throat> uh, I was thinking that uh, one friend of mine was telling, he, he was in, in Nokia, this is iPhone, but in Nokia, and uh, <clears throat> he was telling that we have sold so many phones that uh, we could build uh, the line from the charger, the uh, wire, to the moon and back. So tens of billions of uh, mobile phones. I was thinking that, wow, <laughs> it's quite a long trip to moon and back. But uh, then I was thinking, where is the waste? It's quite a huge amount of waste which is coming from the uh, charger wires. And, uh, and where are they now? Maybe 10 of them are, are in some houses and uh, nobody cares about it. But there are billions and billions of wires everywhere. <clears throat> uh, Yes, uh, I'm, I'm going to look at uh, some market opportunities for, from waste to fuel, anaerobic digestion, battery recycling, smart waste management, and some, something for the membrane technology also. This, uh, all are the, this type of projects are all that I have been involved somehow, and I, I know a little bit more than average people about the situation. <clears throat> so we can first look a little bit about the waste. And uh, somebody can uh, ask that when will be the hit of the garbage waste. As we can see, there's no hit, there's no peak. It's still growing and growing. And you can see that uh, it's growing quite soon. More than 7 million of tons per day. That's a huge amount of waste. Uh, why I'm telling about this? Uh, because, or does, does this matter if it's growing and growing? Yes. Uh, mm, because it's not handled in in right way, right matter. Um, millions of plastics are floating in the oceans, and uh, the microplastics are in the, our drinking water. And uh, also, they are incinerated quite badly, badly way, or it, it's just uh, dumped some somewhere in the rural area. So there, there's a. Uh, a lot of uh, problems uh, in, in development countries, and so what we can do there, we can see one figure where it's bending a little bit. It means that we have already done something for it. But what is it? Uh, zero waste life. Um, uh, what we can think about it. It's, uh, it's not innovation, it's rather philosophy. How do we, how do we organize and how we manage the life? And uh, it's kind of a guide how we can change our lifestyle and processes not to uh, create more waste than it's needed. We can uh, think about the material what we are using. It can be stainless steel, bin, or 
It can be plastic, we can choose it. The lifetime is hundreds of years and maybe the plastic doesn't last so long. So there's a life cycle. And we need to also focus the life cycle in our life. <clears throat> this uh, philosophy can be also impl implemented to organizations and companies. I, I think that there's a way also there can be some, some companies just focusing zero waste life and everything what's related from, uh, to that. If we can move the, our idea and, uh, and uh, philosophy to, into that way, it's changing the world. More than innovation in, in our processes. So, uh, reuse, recycle and resell. That's quite a nice idea also, what I think. <coughs> I move a little bit about the technology and uh, uh, anaerobic digestion is, has been uh, lately coming more and more often. You can see the, this type of uh, thing that bio waste is uh, handled in situ, inside the uh, reactor and it creates biogas. That's, uh, that's growing business at the moment and it has been growing uh, now more than 10 years. Uh, the market uh, has been now, uh, is now about 20 billion euros and it's going to increase to 32 billion euros. So it's growing. Like everything what's related to waste management, it's, it's growing. That's quite simple. And it's nice to have some figures also. This is one, one of the biggest plant in the UK and uh, the, the you can see it's 160,000 tons away from landfill. That's a huge amount of uh, waste and also we can have, have some fuel to heat our homes or get the fuel to the car. <coughs> Uh, waste to fuel, uh, that's, that's something even more innovation. The, the, okay, the anaerobic digestion is waste to fuel also, but if we are making liquid waste, it's even more difficult to do. But uh, there's a uh, market potential, almost 100 billion euros quite soon. That's, that's really that, uh, that people or, or uh, investor believes that it's going to be a huge market in the future. But uh, what I see, the technologies are still there. They are really heavily uh, investment related technologies and uh, almost everybody knows and that even in Finland we have some of these technologies and uh, there's uh, just a couple of examples which are in, in the field now. You can see that there's some Finnish companies also, ST1, Neste Oil, Fortum and other. They are, they are quite in, in well positioned in the, into the market. Uh, yes, Neste Oil is one of the leaders in biodiesel and they are collecting almost uh, all the waste oil which is coming from, from the market and uh, making it as a renewable diesel. That's a big plant. But we have also other technology which are, let's uh, say so, that I hope that these technologies are, are also used quite soon. And uh, we have also ST1, where I was working a few years ago. And uh, ST1 was the first, uh, first uh, uh, manufacturer that, that was making bioethanol from waste. 
it's the only one plant in the world that can make <coughs> bioethanol from waste. You can imagine when I was there speaking first time to the people that, okay, we are going to build this type of plant to Finland and use bio waste to create ethanol. And uh, hopefully, I, I was uh, lucky because I was uh, then in SD1 and, and it's a quite big company, was already then. And, and, uh, but uh, most of the people were thinking that maybe I, I got too big problem in my head. So I was kind of weird guy telling the weird uh, stories about the, how to make bioethanol from bio waste. But we built the plant and the, now it's working. It's about 1.7 uh, million liters per year producing bioethanol and also biogas as a side product. So it has been working 10 years now and after that nobody, <laughs> I was okay, I was um, more innovator than propelhead man. So that's one, one thing that if you have a small company, you have invented something, maybe only you can believe this, <laughs> nobody else, because it's something that, uh, that it's kind of a joke. Yes, this uh, ethanol plants I have been also working. Let's go about um, e-waste. I was telling about the phones and, uh, and it also includes glass and metals and batteries and so on. So it's uh, 1.5 billion uh, mobile phones every year it has to be recycled or even more. That's a huge amount of e-waste, even mobile phones. So, uh, I got some numbers also. <clears throat> so, it's about five billion dollar market at the moment. And, uh, and it's also going to grow 20% each year. And, uh, and uh, what you can, there's a lot of uh, uh, technologies, what you can do. There's a booleaden, for example, a good example, which is uh, doing nickel sul sulfate, zinc oxide, iron, silicates, and uh, lead alloys, copper. O almost all the metals can be removed, and also the plastic and glass. But we have also one Nice example about the battery. There's also battery included in the mobile phone. So, battery recycling business. It's also big business. It's huge because we are now talking about billion <coughs> euros. It's not million or it's not. Uh, it's billion. It's a huge uh, number. So, and it's also growing. I think that. Some of the companies are thinking well, where is the growing market and where to go. All the markets related to wage management is, is growing fastly. Uh, one Finnish company, now renamed it as a Trace Crow, is uh, building a first production plant to Karasamäki, Finland. And uh, they are they have groundbreaking technology and uh, they are trying to produce micronutrient as a fertilizer. That's uh, something new because nobody else can have e even think about using batteries as a nutrient or fertilizer. But it's, it's true, it, you can use it. It's a small amount of uh, of uh, nutrient what you need, but, uh, but still the plants need some nutrient. So this plant is so big that uh, even if we calculate all the Finnish farmers together and, and increase the nutrient level for the correct way, it's not enough. 
this, uh, it, it has to be transported somewhere else away from Finland because there's no market in, in, in Finland. And it's located in Kärsämäki. So that's, I don't know <laughs> what's going to do. Has to be a good um, marketing guy there behind that. Maybe Tatu is going to solve that, that thing. Yes, we are in uh, industry summit and uh, also waste management and IoT is kind of linked together. There's IoT in waste management also and um, there's also billion market in IoT. This is just one unit measuring the level of the garbage bin and, uh, and uh, we have one Finnish company also growing fast and uh, also telling that uh, this Enevo company is the world promising clean tech company in the world, but I don't know if, if it's true, but it was written in the newspaper. Okay, quite nice, but it still just measure the, the level of the garbage bin. <laughs> but uh, it's a couple of hundred, hundreds of, uh, of uh, million euros what they got last financial, financial round, investment, investment uh, round. So it was like 10 million euros. But there are also big uh, companies like Swedes. They are now doing more or less the same. Last year there was a big news that in Australia, Australia they are going to use these uh, smart bins also in Australia. Then we are maybe I, I, I'm closing to wastewater management or or technology. What's uh, what's for example making biofuels? Everybody knows that or some someone has claimed that uh, distillation it's quite expensive. It's not worth to distillate because it's too too expensive. That that I was that uh, almost all of my friends were telling me why, why to make ethanol, because distillation is too expensive. But if you are using this type of membranes, these are zeolite membranes, you don't need distillation, you just put the steam through the membranes and separate ethanol and water. That's uh, in, in SD1 in Hamina, there's the world's biggest membrane plant in the world. That's what, where I have also one patent still there. But uh, it's something unique. You don't need 100 megawatt bio, biomass boiler. You just use membrane and put less than one megawatt there. That's not simple, but it can be done. If we are thinking about the markets, membranes and, and, and uh, arrows and nanofiltration and ultrafiltration, the markets are growing uh, also annually quite heavily. There's a 30 billion market at the, at the moment, just focusing the membrane technologies. So I have still uh, only a few. Uh, <laughs> few slides left. So, um, other thing what uh, people doesn't really believe that uh, if you are going to evaporate one ton water, how much uh, in kilowatts you need? Everybody has read some thermodynamic. So, 780 kilowatts, yes, correct. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it's more or less 800 kilowatts. And uh, but you can do it using uh, membrane technology and also evaporating technology that compress the steam. It's a, it's another type of industrial heat pump. So it's possible to evap evaporate one ton 
water just using less than 10 kilowatts of energy. That's something amazing. I, I think that some of you don't even believe after <laughs> my, my presentation, but uh, yeah, it's true. 10 kilowatts, one ton evaporated water. You can do it. And, and in industry, it's uh, also growing business because the energy price is, is getting higher and higher. So that can be um, handled all type of waste and it can be also closed loop water circulation processes in industry. And it's growing business also. That's one, one case where I have been also working with. It's an Advent energy company from Finland. They, are, they, are, um, they have a, a, a service as a liquid processing service. They are handling the paper factory wastewater. 160,000 tons per year recirculating water back to the process as a service. Quite nice. I, I have never seen this type of a service before, but now, now even the paper factories are recirculating the water back to the process. That's the biggest uh, liquefied biogas production facility in Nordic region. So membrane technology and uh, mechanical vapor recompression, the heat, uh, industrial heat pump, combining these two can save more than 90% of the total energy what you are consuming. Okay, uh, something about my company. I'm working with my own consulting company, Macon. Oh. So I have collected the European Cleantech investment information. There's almost uh, 2,000 projects in Europe related to waste management and cleantech and, uh, and also waste to energy uh, plans. 2,000 projects, about 100 every month is going to be included into the portfolio. And, uh, there's a service business Olu that you can find the information quite easily and also have some more, more details about the project. <coughs> Just calling me and I will tell the price. <laughs> so I think that if you are if you are interested about the investments or if you have some good uh, technology to 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 offer, maybe some pump or ceilings or whatever, you can find uh, all the information in that service. That was all. Thank you. Thank you, Mikko. Are there any questions? Yes, there you go. You have the box there? Catch box? Okay, Ritva Isomaki from Council of Oulu Region. Clean tech is an uh, increase in market. And in Finland and in Oulu, especially, we have a lot of technologies for that, for every, many part of that. So instead of selling one technology, uh, should, couldn't we have an ecosystem of companies and then we could call to some city that we have a solution and we will come and clean your city. Wouldn't it be easier to have critical mass for selling, not only technology-oriented um, one part? Do you think, is it, is it possible? Yeah, for sure it's possible. Uh, I'm working one project with uh, FinPro. Uh, it's project uh, in Myanmar, Burma. And uh, the the idea is that we are, of course, I'm, I'm making the, the baselines and, and also the um, calculation, how much uh, is there 
is there enough biomass to build the biogas plant and so on. Then we have a Finnish offering, all the Finnish company, because I, I don't think that in Oulu, just in Oulu, there's not, uh, not enough the companies, but we are collecting all the Finnish companies and uh, making a bind together as a group of Finnish companies. That's possible. And I, I think that the Finnish government also supports this type of thinking. We are offering the most uh, advanced technology in the world to also to development countries. That's very good. And coordination of that ecosystem is critical, I think. <laughs> yeah. That, and you are doing that. Uh, yeah, it's not so, <laughs> okay. not so difficult. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the coordination, of course, it's because we are boiler manufacturers, we are different energy companies, and they are also getting the fighting their markets together. And of course, membrane, uh, membrane manufacturers are several. So this is still competition also in, in Finland at the moment. Okay, thanks. More questions? I have one. I always have questions. <laughs> one at least. You said that the waste management business is growing by, if I took right notes, 6 to 20% annually. Yeah. Where the need is dire? Where is the biggest need at the moment? The biggest need, uh, if we are thinking about industrial uh, waste management, the world market is about 1,400 billions. Mm. That's the biggest, <laughs> really the big, because all the industry, they have a huge amount of side product. It's not the, the people, my side product is not so huge. <laughs> so the companies, the, the big companies are struggling about their side products and how to handle these. Uh, I think this is the huge market. It's, it's more than 1,400 billion euros market. Um, and who is dominating the market at the moment? Which country or which uh, each, each country has their one or two leaders. Like in, in Finland, it's uh, Fortum. And uh, then we have a couple of smaller companies. Mm -hmm. But okay. like, like in Finland, just few, but they are big. Okay. Um, Nick was referring to the uh, innovation versus market demand and what the investors are looking. They are looking somebody to create the market and identifying the need. When I saw your presentation, there is no need to create the market. It exists. Yeah, it exists. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and I think you already showed some of the inventors that are creating a product category. Yes. With the patents yes, yes, and yes, membranes yes. and yep, things like yep. that. Um, now that you are, uh, you've been dealing with big companies and small companies, what is your one single advice to any small or medium-sized company that wish, wishes to enter this market? What's the one thing they need to do if they want to succeed? That's a tough uh, question. Yeah, join with the big ones. That's one good idea. Okay. Because with, if you are small, you don't have so much money, but if you go with the big company, maybe it's much uh, easier to go to the market. Okay, and yesterday we, we were discussing what it takes for a small company to work with a big company and representative of a big company was saying, come and ask a question and it will be answered. So don't be too humble, just go to the big, big players and, and ask them good questions and if they get interested, maybe you have a cooperation partnerships starting. Okay, thank you very yeah, much, thank Nico. You.